Effects of Music Therapy and Anxiety and Anxiety Disorders, a quantitative study by Christina McGuire and Mabel Integro. What is anxiety? The American Psychological Association defines anxiety as an emotion characterized by feelings of tension, worried thoughts, and physical changes. These physical changes include increased heart rate, restlessness, as well as shortness of breath and chest pain, among other things. People with anxiety commonly have intrusive thoughts and concerns and may want to avoid certain situations out of worry. This effect can particularly become debilitating for many people. Individuals with anxieties can cause a strain on personal relationships, making it difficult to develop a connection with people. Anxiety can begin at any point in time and are more common in women than men. Anxiety is associated with multiple, multiple factors such as substance abuse and depression. The slide lists some of the most common anxiety disorders, which include generalized anxiety disorders, panic disorders, social anxiety disorder, specific phobias, compulsive, obsessive compulsive disorders, and post-traumatic disorder. This slide demonstrates the many different types of anxieties, as well as statistics across the nation of the many Americans being affected by this disease. Assessment. Currently, current practices of treatments of anxiety, though effective for most, lack in diversity. Anxiety treatments should be individualized based off what gives relief for each individual patient. For example, if a patient enjoys art, music, sports, or writing, these would be proper adjunct suggestions and therapy to help treat anxiety. Anxiety is a growing disease, and in order to ensure patient relief, treatment option needs to be available for these patients. Link. So why the need for change in the current practice? According to Anxiety and Depression Association of America, there are over 40 million adults suffering from anxiety each year in the United States alone from ages 18 and up. That's equivalent to 18.1% of the entire U.S. population. And still, the numbers continue to grow. Today, symptoms of anxiety and anxiety disorders are commonly treated with anti-anxiety medications, but how much does the public really know about the medicine being consumed on a daily basis? Current clinical practice has approved many medications in treating and relie relieving symptoms of anxiety. Four of the most common classes of anti-anxiety medications include Selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, serotonin norepinephrine reuptake, reuptake inhibitors, benzodiazepines, and tricyclic antidepressants. It is without a doubt that these types of medications are helpful in people with anxiety during an acute event. However, over time, patients on long-term anxiolytic medications produce many negative effects on the body. Aside from the issues of cost, medication tolerance, and dependency, these classes of medicine produce negative side effects such as sexual dysfunction, hypotension, urinary retention, blurry vision, and sedation. Other current interventions include psychotherapy and cognitive behavioral therapy. Psychotherapy is also known as talk therapy where patients and psychologists engage in a dialogue about the problem and on how to fix them. Psychotherapy is important it's important to have a trusting relationships with therapists and the patient. Without this, psychotherapy, psychotherapy generally doesn't work. Cognitive behavioral therapy is a type of therapy that focuses on identifying, understanding, and changing thinking and behavior patterns. To benefit from this type of therapy, patients must be able to commit themselves fully into the process, which can be time-consuming. This type of therapy is not suitable for patients with complex mental health needs or learning disabilities. As stated previously, anxiety is generally treated with medications. The problem with these medications is that it doesn't always positively affect patients, and as a result, individuals experience a growing tolerance and dependency to these medicines. Therefore, one of the proposed changes is to add other treatment options to patients, such as music therapy. According to authors Trioni, Triona McGaffrey and Jane Edwards, most treatments don't work for everyone and there needs to be an options for these patients. Treatments for anxiety often work for some people and not for, other, for others. 
since each individual can respond to therapy and medicine in a different way. Adding music, adding music therapy as an adjunct therapy for these patients would provide optimal relief from anxiety and provide an alternative coping mechanism. Benefits of music therapy. According to the American Psychiatric Association, music therapy is a proven clinical and evidence-based intervention to address physical, emotional, cognitive, and social needs of individuals. Music therapy can involve playing, creating, moving, and listening to music, as well as singing songs. Each therapy is tailored to fit each individual patient with their specific type of need. Research has shown that music therapy reduces and alleviates symptoms of anxiety, reduces the need for pain medications, lesser need for anesthesia, and helpful in other diseases like Parkinson's. According to the APA, research shown that patients who participated in a 10-week group drumming program found improved anxiety and social resilience. This slide provides more information on the many benefits of music therapy. Some more studies on music therapy and the effects it has on patients with anxiety or mental health disorders in general include Silverman and Rosenau's quantitative study looking at music therapy's effects on moods. This study looked into many different moods, anxiety being one of them, sadness, anger, things like that, and subjected these patients to music therapy and saw what their effect was on these moods. The biggest mood found to be affected in this study was anxiety, and it was found that patients were feeling a relief in anxiety and feeling more relaxed following the therapy. That being said, this specific study only looked at patients from one psychiatric unit, as well as patients only before and after their very first session of music therapy. This added a limitation to the study because if it was looked at through many different units, as well as after a patient had been experiencing the therapy a little bit longer term, the results may be different. Another example of a study was performed by Triona McCaffrey and Jane Edwards. They looked into the effects of music therapy on both inpatient and outpatient patients, and they looked at it from a qualitative standpoint rather than a quantitative standpoint. These patients were either in one specific facility on a, or they had been discharged in the middle of the study from that same unit. Um, this study found that patients tend to respond differently to different types of therapies for anxiety, including music therapy. Patients had different responses to it and different feelings about it. That being said, most of them did feel that the music therapy helped to relieve some of their anxieties and fears. Um, it was limited because it only looked at like generalized mental health patients. It didn't specifically look at anxiety patients. And because it was, again, just that one facility of patients looked at. So current studies lack focus on patients with just anxiety, the long-term effects of music therapy, diversity in samples, as in they look at one specific unit rather than a few different units. And they lack comparing how patients feel with music therapy and medication compared to how they feel with just the medication. Because of this, a new study would be necessary in order to look at those with anxiety and the results these patients experience in different units and compare it to those with just medications. So our proposed change is to utilize music therapy as an adjunct therapy with patients' anxiety medications to help relieve any symptoms of anxiety. 
Specifically, the question would be, in patients suffering from anxiety, does utilizing music therapy for a month as an adjunct treatment with their anxiety medication improve anxieties more than the relief felt by those patients only receiving medication therapy alone? We would look at this from a quantitative experimental design standpoint, and there would be attempts to identify the cause and effect of the topic being studied. Research attempts will be made to identify if utilizing this music therapy as an adjunct treatment will help relieve the symptoms of anxiety, and there will be a control group, which will be when they're only taking their medications, versus the experimental group, which would be medications with the music therapy. The sample population would consist of a purposive sampling of 30 participants. The inclusion criteria includes their adults over the age of 18 diagnosed with anxiety for at least a year. They have the mental ca capacity to sign the written consent, and they can verbally participate in the study. The exclusion criteria is patients who have already participated in music therapy in the past, as well as some demographic data that will be looked at with the study would be age, gender, race, marital status, and the educational level. Resources required for this study would be this, anything to create surveys from paper to printers to the computers to print it off and pens and pencils for those to complete the surveys. As well as a trained music therapist, this would be just to ensure that the therapy is conducted correctly um, in order to provide proper results. In order to implement this, a proper setting we would choose would be an inpatient psychiatric hospital. Participants would then have to be willing and able to sign a consent to become part of the study. As well as this, participants will then continue to take their anxiety meds one month. Following that month, they would take their anxiety meds along with music therapy for another month. And then these two results would be looked at. They would take a survey both before and after therapy begins. So they would take the survey at the beginning of the month where they're just utilizing their medications after at the end of the month, as well as at the beginning of the month where they're utilizing music therapy and at the end of that month. Utilize a Likert scale for survey questions, rating each question from one to five as well as a Hamilton anxiety scale. This assesses the anxiety levels of participants. The, Ham the crown box alpha will then be used to measure the research study's consistency to ensure that the results are reliable. And the SPSS computer software will be utilized to measure all the data collected. So a little bit more about the Hamilton Anxiety Scale. This is a scale that provides clinical researchers and clinicians some numeric data based on the patient's current mental states. It consists of 14 items um, based on psychological and physical symptoms, and participants are able to rate their mood from not present to very severe, with mild, moderate, and severe in between. The setting for this would be at a psychiatric hospital, and some ethical considerations would be taken into account. Each patient would be required to sign that consent, as stated previously, as well as they have the option to withdraw at any time if they feel necessary. As well as this, patients need to stay on their medications. Um, so because of that, there is a control group and an experimental group and patients will not be taken off their medications to look at the results of solely just music therapy. When the research has been approved from our institutional review board, we can look for a hospital to perform the research at. Three different units will be selected in order to help with participation as well as aid in diversity of the sample. Once each patient form fills out a consent form, 
each patient will undergo two trials. First, the control group, in which they will only be on their medications for a month. And second, the experimental group, in which they would be on their anxiety medications as well as participating in music therapy regularly for a month. After this, they'll be asked to fill out the survey as well as complete anything necessary to collect data and analyze the data before and after the study. So integrating and maintaining this practice, we would have to propose the new findings to stakeholders um, after we found that music therapy is successful for those with anxiety. This research we would present to medical conferences and hopefully have published articles about the research in medical journals. As well as this, we would reach out to some major medical companies, hospitals, and doctor's offices that see mental health patients so that they could become aware and knowledgeable on the benefits to help to encourage them to refer their patients. So after we propose these to these doctors, it is in our hopes that mental health physicians will then be able to refer their patients with anxiety to music therapy groups or treatment facilities. After that, slowly the practice will become a part of practice for those with anxiety and will be realized to be effective in the treatment. In order to maintain a proper process, it would be ensured that only trained professionals perform the music therapy so that the therapy is executed correctly. As well as this, the progress of the patients will be looked at and monitored by either the patient's psychotherapist or primary care physician, um, the primary doctor seeing them for the anxiety disorder. Our references are accredited to these listed and thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to listen to our evidence-based practice proposal.